Hey quilting friends, it's Carolina Moore, your favorite sewing and quilting YouTuber, and in this video I'm going to show you how to take our little blocks that we made earlier this morning from our advent and finish them to make finished ornaments. Now I'm going to show you two different ways you can do this, one that is bound and one that is not bound depending on how much time you want to put into it and what look you like best. And then at the end of this whole series, I'll show you how to take all 12 blocks and turn them into a mini quilt. So it's up to you. You can always make more blocks because with these templates, you can make as many of these blocks as you want. So you can do both ornaments and a mini quilt if you make two blocks, or you can just make the ornaments or the mini quilt. Really, it's up to you. All right, you ready? Let's get started. What I have here is some fusible fleece, and I really like fusible fleece for projects like this because I don't have to worry about it shifting. It basically has my basting right in there. It's like a thin batting, and it has a fusible web on one side. And when you feel it, you'll be able to feel one side is smooth, and one side has either bumps, or in this case, it's like a little sprayed on web on there. So what I'm going to do is with my iron, I'm going to iron these right on. Now, when you iron blocks on, you do want to be careful because if I put my iron right on here, what would happen? I would get this fusible right on my iron and I don't want that at all. So you can take a thin piece of paper. Um, I have here just a silicone mat or silicone sheet. This is to protect your surface when ironing. There we go. I want to grab a clean section and not put a dirty section on my iron because that's going to defeat the purpose. And I'm just going to go ahead and fuse this on. Now when you do this you do not want to pull the silicone off right away because the fusible is still melted so it's going to be a little liquidy and we want to let it cool a little bit before we peel it off because always that liquidy uh, adhesive could get create strings um, it'll be more difficult to get off of our mat so we're just going to let it cool off before we peel it off okay this feels pretty cool and I can just peel it off and it's not leaving any adhesive behind on my silicone all the adhesive you can still feel it on here, it's just smoother now. So there's two different ways we can finish this block. One is a little simpler and quicker, and the other is going to have a binding on the outside, which is going to give it a pretty frame. Both are going to look great, and I'm going to show you both. We'll do the quick and easy method with our two-tone blocks. So I'm just going to line this up and I can actually line it up with the ruler and it's gonna square up to three and a half inches. There we go. Three and a half inches. Perfect. And I'm just going to cut off my extra on this. We're going to set this one aside and do that one in a minute. And I have my block squared up to three and a half inches. Now anytime you cut batting or fleece you get it kind of embedded in your mat and that's okay. I'm just going to use my finger and I can just rub most of it right out. And there we go. That's the little bits of fluff that were left on my mat. So I'm going to take a fabric that I'm choosing for my backing and I'm going to go ahead and cut two squares. I'm going to cut one at five inches or a little bit larger. So that's pretty easy here. That's this right here. And this is going to be for my second one. And the other one I'm going to cut at three and a half inches. So I'm just cutting this a little bit larger than three and a half here. I can put this fabric aside. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees and now I am gonna square it up to three and a half inches. Okay. 
There we go. I know that one is three and a half inches square. Now I can take this piece and this piece, put them right sides together. And I'm going to go ahead and stitch all the way around. I want to leave myself, if I can, a good two inches on one side for turning. And I'm going to pick, in this case, a side that doesn't have any seams on it. If you have a choice for a side with a seam on it or a side without a seam on it, pick the side without a seam on it to do your turning. Now you can just stitch it up like this if you want to make a coaster, but if you want to use it as an ornament, you probably want to add some kind of hanger. And this is directional. I've got my trees facing up and my presents facing up. So this is going to be the top of my ornament. And I'm just going to create a loop. And if you want all your loops the same size, just go ahead and measure. So this loop is going to be one and three quarters inch. I like that. Put it right on there. And then I'm just going to secure that with a pin. Then I can take my other fabric, put the right sides together, and I'll be able to sew all the way around. Now there is going to be a little bit of lumpiness here, so if you want to be a little more secure, you can pin all your sides. I'm going to go ahead and not pin. I'm going to be a little crazy, but it's totally up to you. So now we're going to take this over to the sewing machine. I have a quarter inch foot on here. When you get to a corner, you want to stop a quarter inch away from the edge, lift up, turn, put your presser foot back down, and then keep stitching. I'm going to lift up my presser foot because these little ends of my ribbon want to move because of the guide that I have on my quarter inch foot. There we go. quarter inch away from the edge, lift, turn, press the foot down. And that was my last corner. So I'm just going to stitch a little bit, lift my needle up, and then I can cut off my threads here. There we go. So now I have it stitched along all four sides with my hole for turning. I'm going to take some scissors, cut off that extra ribbon, and now I'm going to trim my corners. And when I trim my corners, I do what I call seagulling my corners because it pulls off more bulk from those corners. The traditional way is to just cut it straight off like this. I'll go ahead and do an example here. And you're cutting a couple threads away from your stitching. When I seagull it, I actually cut a little more on each side, kind of tapering it a little more. And I find that that gives me a smoother point. There we go. So now I have my corners clipped and I'm ready to turn this right side up. There we go. Now I can use my fingers to turn this whole thing right side out, but getting those corners nice and sharp makes it look really nice. And it's really tempting to grab your scissors because it have, has a nice good point and poke at those corners. But if you do that, you can actually, with the point of your scissors, because it's so sharp, poke right through your corner and then you'll be very, very sad. So instead, we're going to use a wooden skewer. If you have like a shish kebab skewer, cut off the tip to make it a little more blunt. You don't want it to be super pointy. 
and we can just poke our corners out really gently. There are lots of great point turners out there. That purple thing is a really good one. That one has a nice hook in it that is also great for getting into the corners. But there we go. We have all of our corners turned nice and sharp. And now we're going to tuck in our seam allowance just like that. And we can give this whole thing a nice press to press it nice and flat. I have some threads here. I'm just going to pull on those threads so that I can find the ends of them and then trim them up close. Careful, I don't want to cut a hole in my project. There we go. So now I can stitch all the way around and that'll actually just finish up my ornament. You will have some stitching that overlaps, so I want to make sure that my overlapping stitching is somewhere where it's going to be less visible. In this case, I'm going to have it right down here on the bottom. I think it's going to be least visible there, so that's where I'm going to start my stitching. And you can choose how far from the edge you want to stitch. I'm going to go pretty close, about an eighth of an inch. On this side, I'm making sure that I'm stitching that hole closed. I'm going to double check that. Yep. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and clip these threads so they don't get tangled up in anything. And again, I'm going to lift up to allow my ribbon underneath my quarter inch guide that I have on this foot. And then when I get back to the start, I'm going to overlap by a couple stitches, go back by a couple stitches, and then overlap by a couple stitches again. And that will lock all those stitches in place. I'm going to cut my threads. And now this little ornament is finished. If you want, you can add another line of stitching like down the middle or add more lines of stitching, but the size, it won't need any more than that to keep it secure. So there's one way. We're going to go ahead and get started on our other way of finishing up these. For that, I'm going to switch out my presser foot to one that doesn't have a guide. Now we're going to go ahead and quilt these together and add some quilting stitches together on our ornament pieces here. And you can do that however you like. Um, you can, if you want, use a little bit of spray base to base these layers together. But honestly, they're so small, there's not gonna be much shift on here. I'm not worried about it, but that's up to you. And I'm going to just add some stitching. I did one line and I'm going to keep doing lines and I'm just going to keep them my presser foot width apart. And 
and this is just the way that I'm choosing to do it. If you have a full batting between these layers, you might need a walking foot because there'll be more shifting with a thick batting, but because this is just fusible fleece, I'm not worried about any shifting. Okay, so on one side I just did some lines of stitching. I could probably fit one more line in here, but that's going to get covered up by my binding anyway, so I'm not worried about it. And then on this side, I think I'm going to kind of echo this shape here. Now you can do that with a free motion foot if you're like into free motion, but I'm not going to use my free motion foot here. I'm going to show you that you can actually do this by carefully pivoting with just a regular foot. So I'm starting over here. I'm actually gonna start right here. I could bury these threads, but we wanna keep this still fairly simple. So I'm just doing a couple stitches forward, a couple stitches back, and a couple stitches forward on top of my previous stitching. And that's going to keep this thread from unraveling. And then I'm just taking a couple stitches, lifting and pivoting. And then I'm going to do another round, kind of echoing the shape that I just made. And this side, I'm just gonna take the threads to the edge. I don't have to worry about threads on the edge. Those are all going to get caught up in the binding. I'm gonna do one more little, maybe two more echoes. Let's see how it fits. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and clip my threads, get all this out of the way. There we go. Lots of threads going on back here. There'll be more chance to get rid of some in a minute. Okay. So I did a really structured on one side, a little more organic on the other side. However you stitch this is up to you. This is all decorative. It's not really designed to keep the layers together so much. It does keep the layers together, but on a piece this small, we don't really need to worry about the layers. Now, depending on how much quilting you've done, when you square this up, because we're now squaring this up to three and a half inches, you may find that it has shrunk a little bit, and that happens with quilting because we have our bottom layer and then our batting layer and then our top layer. And when we stitch, that top layer gets kind of like pulled into the batting along that seam line and you have a lot of those tucks and eventually that top layer of fabric actually kind of shrinks in. So you can kind of see that here where the fabric see along that stitch line, it's kind of tucked in and that can actually shrink the size of your overall project. So if this isn't exactly three and a half inches, that's okay. If you want your finished ornaments to all be three and a half inches, you want to center this within and then trim it up to three and a half inches, which means that you'll have a little bit of 
your fleece showing here on the edge but that's going to get covered up by the binding so it's totally fine so i have my binding fabric i'll need about 15 inches i'm going to fold this in half and this is actually about 20 inches so that's perfect going to line up one edge along here and I'm not doing a biased edge binding a biased edge binding will be across the bias we're not worried about that here I'm gonna go ahead and square up one end and then cut a two inch piece. You may be used to doing a two and a half inch binding. Two and a half inch binding is gonna look really big and clunky on our finished ornament. So we really just wanna go with a two inch binding. So I'm gonna take my binding piece Fold it in half and press it in half. So now we can stitch this all the way around and it's going to be a little easier if we go ahead and start our corner here before we bring it to the sewing machine. So I've got this raw edges lined up. I pivoted away from the mini quilt and then back towards the mini quilt. And that gives me a perfect little mitered corner with this flap. I'm gonna move the flap out of the way, bring it to my machine and get this corner stitched. I'm stitching up to the folded part. I don't wanna stitch through that folded part if I can help it. Go back a couple stitches, go forward a couple stitches, lift my needle up and my presser foot up, then I'm gonna move that flap out of the way and start stitching the other side. I should have Kind of tack my stitches there I didn't so I'm going to go ahead and take advantage to do that now and then I'm going to do my next side fold it away fold it towards gives me my little flap or my little shark fin here move that shark fin out of the way and stitch all the way up to that corner couple stitches back a couple stitches forward Needle up, press your foot up, move the shark fin out of the way. Couple stitches forward, couple stitches back. That just tacks the beginning and end of each line of stitches, keeps it all secure. There we go.
Okay, we've come all the way back around to the first side we started at. I'm gonna go ahead and cut all these loops that are around my shark fins. If I cut them now, then they won't be in my way later. I've got some extra threads. Clip those and get them out of the way. So now what I need to do is I need to finish this side. Now this is not a lot of space to do a traditional finish of a binding and so we're not going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clip the edge here because I have this selvage and I don't want the selvage. And I'm going to fold this in a quarter inch. Going to take this side, run it past, trim it down, and now I'm just going to tuck this side in here. Is this going to have a little bit of a raw edge just tucked inside there? Yes. Is that ideal and perfect? I mean, in a perfect world, like in a big quilt, you wouldn't want to finish this way, but this is a two inch binding. It's really small. These are not going to be run through the wash. Um, and it's the easiest, prettiest way to finish these that I've found. If you have another way, feel free to leave it down in the comments. Um, I'm sure there are other ways that you could get these finished up, but this is what works for me. And I just want to make sure that it looks pretty when it's done. So now I've just stitched that all the way across and my binding is attached. One last thing we want to do on our sewing machine before we move to hand sewing is to add our ribbon. So if we want the same ribbon, we'll want one and three quarter inch, right about there. That's our top. I'm going to put this on the back. And I'm stitching this in the seam allowance. So about an eighth inch from the top. And that's just so that it's secured, especially if you do your hand binding, you know, while you're waiting for carpool pickup in the car or while you're sitting in front of the TV, you won't lose your ribbon loop. The ribbon loop is already attached. So now we're going to get ready to attach this to the back. You can do this by machine or you can do it by hand. It's going to be up to you the amount of time you have and what you want it to look like when you're done. So I've flipped one side over. And when I flip the next side over, I want to carefully miter my corner. And I'm gonna do that again slowly so you can see. I want this to be tucked all the way up and then flip this down and you'll see that I get a really pretty corner right here. I'm gonna go ahead and clip that to hold it. We'll do the same on the other side. I'm bringing this all the way up. and flipping that over. And this is how you get really pretty mitered corners on your quilts too. Now this one has this edge. We wanna be a little careful because you can actually pull these kind of apart and stretch them and we don't want that to stretch. We want it to stay put. Flip that over. I'm using Wonder Clips to secure these corners. They are fabulous for securing binding. All right, come here. There we go. You can see they come in different colors. This loop will be able to come up here when we're done. So that's what our binding on here is going to look like. Now you can finish this binding by hand or by machine. I'm going to show you both ways so that you know both ways and it's up to you the way that you wanna finish it. If you wanna finish by hand, you'll need a hand needle and thread and you'll want a thimble. This one's my favorite. I'm doing this with a black thread because I want you to be able to see my stitches or at least see as much of my stitches as you can because these stitches should be fairly invisible. But when you do yours, you'll want to use a matching thread. So we'll just start here on one side, 
I'm going to take my needle and bury my thread and bring it up just on the, the seam allowance side of the stitching. And if you look, I didn't go through my fabric. I just have my thread kind of tucked into that fusible fleece layer. I'm taking my tail of my thread and it's completely disappearing. And then here in the seam allowance, I'm doing three stitches. Careful that I don't catch that thread on my clip. There we go, one stitch, two stitch, and there's a third stitch. Now I'm going to bring it to the non-seam allowance side, and I'm gonna bring the binding back. Now you want to catch a couple threads of this binding So you're going straight across here, a little less than a quarter inch forward, grab a couple more threads, right back in, so we're just moving forward and then taking a stitch to the side. Moving forward, taking a stitch to the side. So as we get up towards our corner, we're gonna remove our clip, and we're just gonna keep going. You're not going through all the layers, you're just going through this back layer. You wanna grab your corner. If you wanna be safe, you can add an extra stitch in your corner. It's okay. Then we're going to turn and keep going. Now don't judge me too harshly on my stitches here. I'm making sure that you, the camera, get the best angle, which means that I do not have the best angle on my stitching. So you'll go like this all the way around when you need to end your thread because your thread's getting too short or because you made it to the other side. You're just gonna do one, two, three stitches. On that third one, oop, come your needle. You can loop through your, or go through your loop to make it a knot. Then you bury this end of your thread in your batting. Again, you are not going through, you're not seeing this at the front. And then cut it very close and it'll suck right back in and that's how you would finish your edge. Now you can also finish this edge by machine and you wanna be really careful when you do this. Make sure that your binding edge is gone past this stitching edge and then by a little extra. And all you're gonna do is take this to your machine and stitch right in that ditch between your quilt and your binding. I'm stitching over the corner that I already did by hand. So that one's pretty easy because it's already stitched down. If you get off a little bit, just get yourself back on track. Okay, so when you get up to a corner, you wanna remove your clip and be very careful that this binding that you're coming up to doesn't flip forward on you. Go all the way up into that corner, lift your presser foot, pivot, and go back down. It's 
same thing again. Clip these threads that are kind of following me around. There we go. When you get back to the beginning, just do a couple stitches forward and a couple stitches back in an inconspicuous spot. You can clip your threads and then just double check on the back that you've caught the binding at least almost everywhere. If you have like a small spot where you missed it, you're fine. But on the front, all your threads should be nice and hidden. So I have, there we go. I had some loose threads, not loose threads everywhere here, but your stitching is nice and hidden right in this edging and it looks like it's just part of the quilting any parts that you see. So there you go, two different ways that you can finish your ornament, whether you wanna go the simple method that really highlights the piecing or if you want it like framed with binding, they are both gorgeous, they are both lovely, and they will both look fabulous on your tree this year. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Make sure you're subscribed. I have lots of quilting videos year round and I don't want you to miss out on any of those. Thanks so much for watching my friends. I will see you right here real soon. And if you are doing the holiday advent, then I'll see you here tomorrow with tomorrow's blocks, but these finishing methods will stay the same regardless of which day's blocks you are working on. Bye for now, my friends.